Good afternoon. We welcome any visitors who are with us in person or joining us via our webcast as we continue the Triduum Liturgy today with the Passion of our Lord. There is a worship aid um, to follow the order of service today and all of the music is listed there. You do not need to use the hymnal for the music. You will want to look at the readings. They are number 1146 in the hymnal. Again, 1146. Our collection today is for Christians in the Holy Land and our celebrant is Archbishop William Lorry. Please stand as we begin in silence. O God, who by the passion of Christ your Son abolished the death inherited from ancient sin by every succeeding generation, grant that just as being conformed to him, we are born by the law of nature the image of the man of earth, so by the sanctification of grace we may bear the image of the man of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants and a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Set me free. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Because of all of my faults, I have become a reproach, an object of scorn of my neighbors, and of fear in my friends. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I am forgotten like someone dead and have become like a broken vessel. For me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My lot is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of mine enemies and those who pursue me. Father, A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The Word 
of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ for the Lamb well. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew of the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom are you looking for? Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you were looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper who brought Peter in. Then the maid who was, who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and they were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where the Jews gather, and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? 
Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They will know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out and said to them, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, if he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled that he said indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, king of the Jews and they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold, the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? 
Do you not know that I have the power to release you, and I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over his spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked for Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. 
So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. They did not break his legs, but one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled, not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate, if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Brother priest and deacons, knights and ladies of the Holy Sepulcher, seminarians, and all dear friends in Christ Jesus. We have just taken part in the proclamation of the Lord's death. Let us worship him who loves us more than we could ever ask or imagine. Let us be amazed at the depth of his love for us, a love that knows no limits, and let us love him in return. Moments from now, we will unveil the cross, and these words will ring out across this cathedral church. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. Then one by one, we will approach the cross in adoration. We will adore the one who for our sake suffered, died, and was buried. Good Friday is that day when we must do away with every semblance of presumption. How easy for you and for me to imagine that we are just average people, people with good points, but also our faults, a few here, a few there, but in the main self-sufficient, needing from God only a little encouragement and a little help. Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves. The Son of God, after all, became one of us, assuming our humanity. Though sinless, he was tempted in every way that we are tempted. Though he was God's eternal Son, he placed himself in total solidarity with us. Jesus understands our weaknesses from within, our physical infirmities, our emotional limitations, our proclivity to sin. He is that high priest, able 
to sympathize with us in our weakness. Jesus also knows that the burden of our sins is too heavy for us to bear. As we read in Psalm 38, my iniquities overwhelm me, a burden too heavy for me. The reading from the prophet Isaiah presents the figure of the suffering servant, a mysterious figure who would suffer for the sins of others. After describing the disfigurement that this servant of God underwent, Isaiah says, but it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, upon him was laid the chastisement that makes us whole. Hearing those words of Isaiah, taking them to heart, can we not only see Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, innocent of sin, yet completely united in obedient love with his heavenly Father, Jesus took upon himself our sins and the sins of all humanity, and not only our sins, but also the estrangement from God that sin produces in our hearts and the discord that sin produces in human relationships. The physical torments that Jesus endured were the outward sign of the inward torment that Jesus experienced as he took upon himself the heavy yoke of our sins how deeply his sinless soul suffered as he experienced our sinful alienation from the God in whose image we had been created. Oh, some say that God demanded the death of his son as if he were exacting vengeance, as if he were an angry God, exacting the proverbial pound of flesh so as to be assuaged. But just the opposite is true. God is unchanging in his love for us. God is passionate in his love for us, for God is love. He thirsts for our love. And sin, sin is not the mere breaking of a rule but the breaking of our relationship with God, introducing into the world age after age, untold suffering. God loves us too much not to take this state of affairs seriously. Indeed, so much did he love us that he sent us his son to take upon himself our sins to reconcile us to himself and to one another. The burden we cannot bear, Jesus bore for us. The knot we cannot untie, Jesus untied for us. It was by dying for us that Jesus triumphed over sin and death it was by laying down his life for us that Jesus revealed the glory of his Father's love. In his account of the Last Supper, John the Evangelist comments that Jesus loved his own and that he loved them to the end. That is to say, he loved them to the point of laying down his life for them. In the account of John of the passion and death of Christ, Jesus' last words are, it is finished. In his death on the cross, Jesus completed his mission, for he loved us 
to the very end. Indeed, he loved us beyond the limits and confines of this world as he rose from the dead and ascended to his Father, where he still pleads for us. That is why the letter to the Hebrews urges us to constantly approach the throne of grace, to receive mercy, and to find grace for timely help. By dying and rising, the Lord has opened the way for you and me to find forgiveness. Let us then lay at the feet of the crucified Savior all our sins, including those grave betrayals of trust on the part of church representatives that have harmed so many victims. Only the pure, innocent, and infinite love of our Savior can atone for sins such as this. And let us do more. Let us be willing to suffer with Christ. St. Paul speaks somewhere of filling up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. Christ's death on the cross remains the all-sufficient source of grace, forgiveness, and mercy. Yet his sufferings are not complete until each one of us consents to share in them, until every member of the body of Christ participates in his redemptive love. Surely this means repenting of our own sins, confessing them, and indeed bearing the evil consequences that sin brings about in our lives. But the crucified Savior is also inviting us to bear one another's burdens, to be willing to suffer not only for our own sins, but for the sins of others, including those who have gone before us, including those sins in which we were not involved. Just as Jesus suffered for us, the innocent for the guilty, so too he invites us who are not innocent to atone both for our sins and the sins of others. This is part of what it means to be a member of the body of Christ. And taking on this burden does not lead us to blind alleys of guilt or anger, partaking of the redemptive sufferings of Jesus is our path to peace and glory. For only then can we say that Jesus' self-giving love and mercy has taken root in us. Let us indeed approach the throne of mercy not as a throne that is guilt or, and bejeweled, but rather the throne that is the cross. It's from the cross that Jesus reigns as victor over sin and death. It's from the cross that his blood and water flows down upon us, even now, in the sacramental life of the church, the font of cleansing and the spirit and the source of sacrificial love. Yes, let us be amazed. Let us be grateful. Come, let us worship.
Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for our most holy father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishop, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us that under him the Christian people, governed by you their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop William, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us also pray for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism 
they may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter in the way of salvation. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth and that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right with sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, you created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you 
the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for true peace and freedom for all. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace and freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all error, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of all who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all victims of sexual, physical, or emotional abuse, especially those who have suffered at the hands of those who work in the church, that they may find understanding, consolation, healing, and peace. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, may those who have suffered due to the violation of trust at the hands of ministers of the church, find through your constant care, concern, and love an unfailing source of comfort, support, and a renewed trust through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come let us adore. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, Come let us adore.
teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen.